What is up guys, it is Regulus here and welcome back to episode 3 of Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. That is right guys, we left off the last episode in this cave. If you have not yet seen it, make sure you go and check it out before watching this video. I will leave a card up in the top corner if I remember. And we're going to start speaking to some of the people in here, such as Elodie. The elf who we saved thug. earlier on. Rare is the human who goes against their own for an elf. I'm going to use my undead skills and say, uh, I'm glad to have been of help and I prefer to be judged by my actions, not trivial matters like appearance or race, since I am undead. The elf appears momentarily puzzled by your comment, but then offers you a dignified little bow. As far as I'm concerned, you are noble and just in both actions and appearance. I am in your debt. Uh, now, my next question. Do you know a way out of the fort, Elodie? I hear of no escapes. The only way out is through. Through the Magisters, through their cure. Thugs, I can stand, but oh, I fear the Magisters. I don't blame you. Magisters are much more terrifying than thugs. Uh, but who is in charge around in here? In this cave, we trust the healer. She is young, but she sees. She knows more than we know. In the camp, the brute Griff rules. He who gives the bread has the power. How did you end up in Fort Joy? It gives me great pain. I'm with my family. We are making beautiful magic. We are healing a tree cut down with great violence. The Magisters come. My family runs, but I fall. My son looks back. I shout to him to run. I am taken. Oh dear. Wait, before you go. Oh, she's not going to let us go yet because we helped her I out. I do not forget this. We got a seven head. <laughs> oh, lovely. I save it for a special occasion, but I can think of no finer occasion than this. Thank oh, you. Thank you. So we get to pick something. A new armor or weapon of some sort. And I think... That leather armor is gonna be the way to go for this reward. And we can equip that to our main character, Fane. Lovely. You may notice we also have a bucket in the helmet slot for inventory, which we can put on, but it lowers your initiative, which basically means you are slower um, in turn in battle. We could also go through here to that poison you can see in the top right, but there is some dangerous enemies over there that we don't particularly want to deal with quite yet. First off, let's speak to... Oh, don't sit. Speak to Ruler, who is very hard to select with a controller. In this fort joy, your kind I handle, but small ones. She does not like children. So that children are necessary for a stable population. I love my scholarly abilities. Always seems to have something to say. An elf lives forever. If she stays away from spears and fire, she has no need for slimy, sticky, small ones. Oh, I honestly didn't know that elves lived forever. That is an interesting concept. Okay. Ooh, what is this book? Oh, we can't take it about it being stealing. Bugger. Okay, let's speak to Sahelia, this dazed-looking elf woman. Losa suddenly grabs your arm. Oh. Her hand is damp. Her face looks pale and grey. Oh, so we have a Losa interruption here. Sometimes your companions will interrupt um, you talking to a certain character because it's part of their quest line, which will add additional kind of quest and all of that jazz to the game. Hey, listen, I, I don't know why, but, but I think I need to talk to this elf. Do what you must, Losa. Uh, tell her she needn't ask you. The floor is hers. She darts over to the elf without responding. They begin talking in earnest, more quietly than you can overhear. Losa suddenly snatches up both the elf's hands and leans close to her. Her voice rises. You have to tell me. The whites of Losa's eyes fade to grey, uh -oh. then black. The colour runs into her veins, crisscrossing her skin like lightning. She keeps hold of Sahela's hands. Sounds like Losa's getting the possessive uh, thing coming through and we may be in trouble. Now, Losa. Do not let it. You must be strong. Uh oh. Be strong. Fight. Fight. So she's just whispering. You are okay. You are yours. 
No one else is. Well, so Sahili is trying to help her through the possession approach and touch Losa's arm. Uh, no, I think. Watch and listen. Shut up. Let go. Let go. Let go. Uh oh. I don't want to hurt her. Don't make me. Oh dear, she's talking to the Losa demon in her head. Tense with the effort of holding Sahila's hands in tight, painful bunches. Oh dear. Leave me alone. Leave me. I don't want to. She's finding it. Me. She's finding it. Losa's eyes are black. Sahila's fingers are white under her grasp. No, don't hurt Sahila. Let me go. Please. She's blind. She can't even see. A sinister smile spreads uh -oh. across Losa's lips. She jerks the elf toward her. Chatty, chatty oh, elf. A different voice. Chatty elf with all the answers. I wonder what your blood tastes like. Oh god, okay, Losa, so. Please. This is no longer you, Losa. We must not defend her. She wakes if she is weakened. We must hurt her to protect her, you see? Uh, yes, rush forward to help the elf. Losa isn't in her right mind, so we need to hurt her. I bet to... elf blood oh, dear. tastes like honey, like nectar, like joy itself. Oh, I really hope we get to see the embodiment of this character inside her at some point. I want to see what it, this demon looks like. Oh, no, don't. Elodie, if you kill Losa... Oh, thank you. Thank God. Okay, we need to weaken her. So... We shouldn't go too hard, so I'm just going to use my wand for now. Um, actually, we will summon our incarnate. He's not too dangerous. If we get a, a solid hit off with him, yeah, that's a good amount of damage. Almost enough. A few more hits. Oh! She comes back to us when she is weaker. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I thought the Red Prince was about to finish her. He was just gonna wipe her out. I wonder what happens if you kill her at that point. That sounds like it could be dangerous. And now she wants to speak to us, as you can see by that little uh, exclamation mark above her head. So let's have a chat. Don't look at me like that. I'm not looking at you like anything. If you don't want to talk about what just happened, that's fine by good. me. I don't. Oh, let's good. keep moving. I want to get out of this bloody place as soon as possible. Are you gonna be okay? I'm fine. You're fine. We're fine. I just want to get out of here. Let's this is go. gonna be an issue, isn't it, Losa? You are in super denial. Now, can I speak to Sahelia again? Yes, I can. You when you approach. She smiles as though she recognizes you, though she couldn't have seen your face. Hello, stranger. A strange person from a strange time. I wonder, do you even know how lost you are? How do you know about that? I see it before my eyes. Uh, I've heard that far seeing is as much a burden as a gift. So she can kind of like see things that you wouldn't be able to see, but she's blind. So it's kind of a bit of a trade off, I suppose. <laughs> it is not so bad. I know which days have bread and which days have none. I know more bread comes someday. It helps. Um. I'm not here to talk about my private life. Your life is not your own. Your life is for us all. I cannot say more. You see someday. Mm, okay. Well, I found an elf named Amaro who has... Um, I've struck a deal to have him freed because he's currently trapped. Ah, you help him. Your open heart surprises even me. Okay, so all the elves in Fort Joy seem to be pretty tight at the moment like they're all hanging out in this cave I guess so I am happy to help bless me. you bless us all wonderful so we seem to be on the correct side of Sahelia at the moment let's talk to these children Back, evil ogre, or I'll get you with my sword laugh and beg the valiant knight not to slay you I'll <laughs> You're really fun. Hey, I'm going to hide somewhere in the cave and you come find me. So we're doing a bit of hide and seek, are we? Set. Go. So he's going to run off this way. It's a bit unfortunate for him that you can just follow him. Just be like, duh, 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 duh. hello. Let's <laughs> <laughs> follow you, dude. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me hide again. Okay. Oh. This next part is a bit more difficult because he uses an invisibility potion, which obviously makes it 
slightly more difficult to catch him. Luckily, I do know where he goes, but first we're going to speak to Frolly. Are you not a human? Um, no. I'm a lizard. <laughs> I just didn't grow my scales yet. Well, I'm gonna play along and say how right she is. You must have been mistaken. Yes, you were. Now get human. Oh, calm down, Frolly, you aggressive girl. Oh, there he is. Wow. You're really smart. I bet. You know what? I bet my best friend would really, really, really like you. Oh, would he? Come on. I'll introduce you. Okie dokie. I know how to spell introduce. <laughs> it's I N T R O D U C E. I'm honestly pretty impressed. For being trapped in a prison, you've got some good knowledge behind you, kid. So. My way is too small for you. You may wonder why we've switched to the Red Prince. Hope you brought a shovel. I know we have a shovel, but I'm just used to digging with my lizards. We're going to have to dig through to get to the location where Mr. Modi wanted us to go. So if we dig right there, you will notice an ancient stone hatch. From there, we travel through to this extra compartment to the cave. Luckily, there is no enemies here, so we will be fine. But we can also loot everything in here without being worried. We did get some gloves, actually, didn't we? No, we got boots. Lovely. So, you will see, there's a big statuesque man over here, but he is talking. This is my new friend. He's really smart. You'll like him a lot. Please, small child. Lord Wivermore. to my ruminations. But he's really nice and tall. Maybe he can even help you with that thing. Oh, that thing. Why? A grown friend. You brought an adult here. Good. Good God. Can it be? Hello, I am adult. Let me speak to you, Lord Wivermore. You, dead walker. Tell me true. Stand you with the source hunters, or do you serve the town at Bracus Rex? Well, honestly, I don't know what you're talking about, but I suspect that it's ancient history now. Ancient history? Can it have been so long already? Gods, how the time flies. So this guy was around when Bracchus Rex was around. Um, that statue we saw on the beach when we first landed. I haven't seen a living soul in all that time. What a strange notion. Why are you trapped down here, Lord Wivermore? A wicked king, it was. Bracchus Rex by name. That's him. The Order of the Source Hunters discovered a great horror upon this prison isle, and I was sent to stop it. Yet, my failure was absolute. I am not fit to bear the insignia of the Source Hunters any longer. So you play as Source Hunters in the first game, actually, which is quite interesting, and this guy was a Please Source sir, Hunter. You must free me. Prize this spear from my chest, where it has been stuck fast for the last thousand years. Seize the spear. End this degradation. I beg you. So if we take this spear out of him, we require a bit of strength for that, so we'll switch to our fighter, the Red Prince. And we will grab that spear right out of him. You have set my body free. Free to crumble to dust at last. But my spirit... Blast! I remain trapped in this mouldering skeleton yet. There must be some strong magic at play here. Luckily, the Red Prince has the scholar ability as well. I have heard of such magic. But I've never known anyone so foul as to employ it. Bracchus Rex. May maggots lace his entrails. After he interred me in this cell, he must have drawn my very soul away from me and stored it elsewhere in the fort. Thus, he has bound me entirely to the mundane realm. But I know this place well. I could lead you to its likely location. In turn, you would find a path straight out of this fort. My freedom for yours. What say you? That sounds fair. I'm willing to help you out, Lord Wivermore. You sound like a pretty nice Marvel, guy. My friend. You're also very Marvel. large. You're a Marvel. very Marvel. large man. Inside the fort itself. There's a secret switch on a statue of the Seven in the courtyard. Surely you know it. Ooh, so he's the telling us about the secret switch. And you'll be led into the prison's main floor. I suspect that within Bracchus's phylactery room, you will find the container which ensnares my soul. He has likely disguised it well. 
but search there for another hidden switch. So we need to keep an eye out for hidden switches. Slave to these walls. With your help, I'll die. At last. Okay. So let's quickly ask him if there's anything more he can tell me about the island. Dangerous place, my friend. Dangerous indeed. Brachus used this place to build an arsenal of terrible weaponry as yet unseen in our world. Here, he and his researchers crafted punishments and snares contrary to human dignity. Objects that could contain souls, ones that could purge the very essence from sorcerers. My order would never have used such barbaric magic against our enemies. And how do you know where your soul is kept, Lord with I was fully briefed about this awful place before I came. I never thought oh, I, I skipped that. His Whoopsie. And yet, here I am. That's all right, though. Now we've got a new quest, and something else that's quite exciting is we actually receive the Spear of Brachus Rex, which has a decent amount of damage for this point in the game. He can get petrified on it and has earth damage as well, so we're going to give that to our fighter, of course. I don't think there's anything else really we can equip to our guys yet. Fortunately not. Losa runs double poison ones, so we got to make sure not to attack any undead enemies with Losa or she will just heal them. But we can use Losa to attack ourselves, which may come in particularly handy. Now, we have done what I believe to be everything currently in this cave. We don't want to go fight the dangerous enemies yet, so we... Oh, that is not the exit. So we're going to leave and continue on our little journey. So, if we travel along this way, I think I mentioned in the last episode, we have Sabeel. Now, I kind of want to take Sabeel on as a companion, because I think having an elf is very helpful for the eating thing. So, let's... Oh, look at Sir Laura. He's awesome, dude. I'm going to speak to him first, actually. Pensively, our shield looks down upon us. I have some questions. Dear me, it has questions, Quercus. I love how he speaks mm. to the cat. Why, yes, I suppose answering them is the polite thing to do. Lovely. Speak, shield, what are your queries? I uh, would like more details about the great acorn. What is it exactly? A giant body, but no giant brain, eh, Quercus? Surely even the tall folk know that Rivalon was bare before the great acorn fell from above and seeded the Irwood, covering this land in beautiful, perfect forests. Beautiful and perfect until the giant races, no offense, realized they could use it to build their houses and fuel their fires. They carved the Irwood up and the forests shrank and shrank. None of the original wood remains. But someday, the great acorn will fall again. The forests will be reborn. And the giant races will be wiped from this world. <clears throat> At least that's what I hear. Well, Sir Laura, I love your voice, but I'm still a little confused. Where did this acorn come from? I know you said it fell from the sky, but... Oh, Quercus, it wants answers. As if it is the first creature to ponder the big questions of the universe. <laughs> what tree did the great acorn fall from? Where did that tree come from, if not a greater acorn? Could you build a nest great enough to store the great acorn for the winter? <laughs> Some questions have no answers. Quercus, why is that so difficult to understand? Oh, I can't wait to travel with this guy. The great acorn will come. It will destroy the world, and squirrels will reign supreme forever. I fail to see what's so difficult to grasp. Now, I'm going to ask you, Quirkus, because... Not Quirkus, Sir Laura. You freak me out a little bit. Uh, do you think it's good that the Great Acorn may return? What do you say, Quirkus? We once believed it was good, but now... No, quite right. As terrible as the giants have been to us... We do not want to see them wiped out. I really hope there's a quest to destroy the Great Acorn. That would be awesome. Brother, we must find a way to live together in peace. Giant and squirrel. I quite agree. 
Peace ought to be the end goal in all matters. Although it would be quite a bit easier to get along if the giants would stop turning our home forests into spears and ships and things, wouldn't it, Quirkus? We say standing on a broken ship. <laughs> Perhaps the shield will let them know as much. Okay. Good to know. We've got a nice bit of conversation in with him there. Now, before we speak to Sabeel, we are actually going to go this way because the Red Prince does want to have a chat with this guy over here that you can see sleeping. Just as you're about to address the lizard, the Red Prince bars you with an outstretched arm. This man is a dreamer. As you know, I need a word with him. You may wait here while I speak. Okay. I, I not want to give you permission. You are a prince after all, but I'm going to do it anyway. Permission indeed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Bids the dreamer stand up and pay attention, which he does in a groveling and awkward manner. The dreamer then chews and swallows a handful of Drudenay leaves before slipping into a trance-like Oh, look at the red prince. He's in a trance as well. Look at him. That's crazy. He falls asleep. To your surprise, the Red Prince lies down and follows suit. After about half an hour, they wake up and begin to discuss what they saw in their dreams. The Red Prince pinches the bridge of his nose in apparent irritation before turning his back on the jabbering dreamer. Tell him you couldn't help but overhear some of the nuggets of wisdom you just received. You receive a withering glance in response. A deserved bit of sarcasm, I suppose. But though this stingtail fellow may be a less than stellar specimen in the firmament of dreamers, the dreams themselves proved to be quite elucidating. Turns out I'm being hunted by an enemy I didn't know actually existed. The myth-shrouded House of Shadow. So another House of Lizards. The dreamers, though, they're on my side. And they've visions of me on the throne. Um, tell him you've little faith in visions. Although, I'm here to help you, Prince, to get onto that That's throne. That's because you haven't seen that other world in all its glory. It is majestic, fit for a prince. Oh, I was born with the promise of an empire, and that promise will be kept. But to keep it, I must find a second dreamer, a greater one, a more experienced traveler of the dream world. Well, then we gotta find another dreamer. Mara is her name, and she resides in the swamplands east of the fort. So, let us make our escape and venture there post haste. So Red Prince's next quest is outside of the fort. What dreamers too if I chewed that much Drudene? Good to know. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go and speak to Sabeel because I do believe Sabeel is going to be our third our fourth or third I suppose and final companion because she's just that interesting. Now yes there's Beast and Ithan but Sabeel, I feel like we want an elf on the squad. Elves have great abilities. Amid the squad she's of just joy, and a cool, she's a cool character. Elf with diamond features, regal and radiant, but cold too, and sharper than any knife. She was the one who sat rolling dice in the ship that went under, deciding fates with every roll, or so she said. Her eyes are focused on a lizard some distance away. And you get the distinct feeling he's an unfortunate man indeed to be trapped in her tiger-like gaze. So she is looking at Stingtail, that's right, the dreamer we just spoke to. Approach her and ask why she, what has her so enamored with that lizard? No sooner have these words left your mouth than she turns about and grabs you in a stranglehold. You feel the tip of a long needle being pushed a little ways into one of your neck's vertebrae. Oh, that's terrifying. You caught me off guard. No one catches me off guard. Better tell me who you really are, or this time, I'll let my needle do the licking. Fane, tell her true. You're an ancient undead looking for his long lost people. I see. It does so satisfy to have a purpose in life. A push, a pivot, and now you suddenly face her. The needle still all too deeply embedded in bone. Can't imagine the needle hurts particularly much Despite in the bone. <laughs> situation, you notice something that remained undetected in the gloom of the ship. A flaw in her diamond features. A curiously shaped scar on her left cheek. Uh, why? Oh, sorry. How did you get that scar, Sabeel? Let me tell you a little story. Here we go, everybody. It's story time. That's right. Once upon a bad old time, a lizard cut this thing, this living scar 
into my cheek. The mark of a slave. That's right, Sibyl used to be a slave. Of sorts. And I've traced that lizard here to Fort Joy. I intend to raise the subject with him. Well, I would like you to know that I am not that lizard, so please remove this needle from my neck. She drives the needle in oh dear. <laughs> that didn't help. In truth, <laughs> it does not matter in the least who you really are. You saw me mark my prey. You could warn him, save him, or kill him before I get my chance. That's true, but I don't really want to do that. Oh, that makes no, you not really. a liability. That makes you needle feed. How about this? Instead of killing me, could join me. We have a rather ragtag bunch of scoundrels here, and I think you'd make a good addition to the team. A bright sparkle of laughter follows your proposal. <laughs> How amusing. I admit I had not seen that twist coming. I was certain the pitiful begging was about to begin. Well, don't assume too much, for I am fain. <laughs> make your case and do it quickly. Why should I join you? Well, I am planning an escape. And I've need people, need of people with talents like yours. And who doesn't want to escape Fort Joy? You'll be one of the lucky three selected to escape with me. And maybe that random blonde chick that seemed to want to meet me in arcs. Escape? <laughs> How you do tickle me. Most of the misguided deers around here would argue such a thing is impossible. Well, I'm going to remind you that I saved you from certain death back on that ship. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> well played. Oh, little needle mine, what should I do? Push or pull? Hmm, the agony of choice. The benefits for helping me far outweigh the benefits for killing me. You know what? Today is a rather fine day. Sunshine and an easy breeze. Yes, I'll let you live. I'll even agree to travel with you, provided we talk to that lizard. It is a beautiful day, isn't it, Sabir? You are 100% right. Look at the water and the sun and the sand. Oh my god, I'm it's not beautiful. Sure the weather will save him. I don't care. As long as I get to look at it while he gets killed, I'm happy. With a casual flick of the wrist, she withdraws the needle from your neck and smiles, as if she just invited you to sit down for tea. You must have noticed um, that you were pushing to bone, not flesh, correct? Yes, the needle did find you rather tough to chew. Then again, I already knew I'd have to push hard, knowing what you really are. Well, again, like I say, all the companions know. This may strike you as, um, rather eccentric, but the thought of travelling with one such as yourself quite enthuses me. Yes, well, I am quite a fun person she to travel with. She ever so slightly and looks at you almost mockingly. You can't help but contemplate with both dread and delight the absolute darkness at the heart of her cat's eyes. Excuse me, I have two cat companions? We don't need another person with cat eyes? <laughs> yes, this will be jolly good fun. Jolly good Let's fun. Let's discuss our respective roles then, shall we? Now... You, me and Death will be playing many a round of hide and seek. So, what role would you like me to play? Now realistically, you can pick any role for any character. But Sabeel has only has one role in my mind. Stealth, the quick silence of the dagger striking unseen. That said, I'm perfectly lethal wielding any weapon or magic. So, the choice is yours. And Rogue is gonna have to be it, because she is a fantastic rogue. She just fits rogue in every way possible. She's gotta be a rogue. Me fine. Lead on, or better yet, let me take the lead. That settles it. Me. You're not quite certain you'll ever sleep soundly with Seville in any sort of proximity, but at least she's on your side for the moment. Lovely. And we have fleshed out our team of four guys. That's right. Um, we can change team members at any point in time in this first act of the game. So if we decide we want Iphen or um, Beast, we can always change very easily. So keep that in mind. Now, we shall come over here and yet again have another chat to Stingtail. Approach the lizard. Sibyl cups your chin between thumb and index finger, then guides your eyes to hers. Listen, I need to have a chat with this here morsel of flesh. He has wronged me once, but may just do right by me this time. 
Uh, okay, I don't see why not. Go ahead and have that chat. Sabeel proceeds to throttle the unsuspecting lizard with one oh, hand as she drives the tip of her needle into his lower belly with the other. Then the questions commence. You hear him yelp about the master, lone wolves, and a man called Griff. Oh, we all know Griff, don't we? And we know that Iphan is a lone wolf. Then, quite oh, simple, okay. His blood everywhere as Stingtail <laughs> falls to the ground. Face first into his own intestines. Okay, cool. Seville heaves a sigh of satisfaction, and as she wipes her needle clean, shoots you a cursory look. Chat's over. Demon elf, how dare you strike down a dreamer? Calm Such is my down, Prince, and doubly so. My pleasure. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention that. Uh, Stingtail did actually steal Griff's oranges, so that kind of killed, literally, two birds with one stone. We can now speak to Sabeel as well. Something on your mind? Um, demand to know why she's just brutally it's killed simple. Stingtail. He scarred me, so I scarred him extensively. I mean, it's kind of fair. You with devilishly innocent eyes. Can you blame me? I'm gonna be 100% honest, guys. I know that there's no animations when stuff like that happens, but... I can, like, you get such a vivid picture from the narrator and the voice acting combined. I don't think you need the animations. Like, you can paint it in your head and you're like, Crocky, mate. <laughs> um, admit that if someone had likewise scarred you, your reaction might have been there the same. It is. I was wondering when your spine would make an appearance. Excuse me, my spine is always visible. I am undead. Anyway, what's dead is done, so let's move on, shall we? Despite my high hopes, this scar disfigures me still. What's next? The search for the master continues, of course. Hungry work, the hunt. And you know what? I'm feeling a bit peckish. Oh, are you? Stintel mentioned a cook, as it happens. A fellow named Griff. Two birds, one stone. How about it? Sounds good, as we do know Griff. And now we can steal Stingtail's stuff without having to worry about it being stealing. I think this was the crate I was after. Looks like someone's made off with most of the contents there. That's right, that was the crate we were after. Now we can return to Griff, but first we'll travel along the beach a little longer and see who or what else we can encounter. There's a character up here, an elf by the looks of it named Maul. Here you are. I wonder what keeps you. Tell me your tale. What do you want to know? Start from the beginning. Start from where you come. Explain that you came from another land. Come from another land, another time, another world. Almost. Now we're going to try and use fame uh, dialogue options as much as we can. I may have skipped one in the last episode, but I want to try and use them as much as we can because we are fame. I see, I see. Now tell me more. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you find. Say that you seek to learn, to learn about this new world and to learn what happened to the old. I understand. Now tell me how your story ends. Mm, I'm not sure. But you hope. Oh, but I hope it ends with answers. To draw back the veil and see the truth is no simple task. To seek the unknown, maybe even the unknowable. We can see the things we lose. Oh, we got a ruby? Eyes, That's a bit nice hearts. of you. This ruby does the trick. Thanks for the gift. It's nothing. Many fragments swell on my shore. See what I gather. So he sells geomancer skills, so poison and earth skills, which currently I don't think we are too desperate for. Now I'm actually not sure if the ruby can be used for anything. A rare high value gemstone called God's Heart by the faithful dwarven miners of the mountain region. That may come in handy a bit later on. Okay, keep traveling along here. There's some people over here too. Hello, Margo. The woman looks out on the gently lapping waves. She seems totally at peace, but as you approach, she turns to you with a cheerful smile. Oh, she seems nice already and we haven't even spoken. I haven't seen you around here before. You? I just arrived. Well, don't worry too much if you have a hard time settling in. Takes a while to get used to the place. You here alone? I've fallen, uh, I've been lucky enough to make some close ties. She gives you a long look. You keep them friends of yours close, eh? Some of us haven't got anyone at all anymore. 
hey, you can join us. I'd be happy to take you along, even if you're not a fighter. You look like you can cook. You could cook us some food, heal us up, and we'll help you escape from Fort Joy. Can't make better. Uh, thank you for the advice. It's nothing. If I haven't learned that by now, I haven't learned anything at all. Why are you here alone, though, Margot? Used to be, I had a family. A husband and a little boy. We were healers. Source was in our blood. Oh, this sounds like a sad story. And they brought us here. I couldn't stop them from taking my boys from me when they did. Reckon they were cured. Maybe even released. Don't know why the Reds didn't take me too. Oh, everyone thinks this cure is... Like, hey, look, we're cured. You go back home, no problems. Oh, ho, 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 I don't think so. Home. Waiting and remembering. Ask her to tell you more. What were her boys like? Her eyes sparkle. You gotta be nice. You gotta be nice. Kind of you to ask. Stefan. He was my little one. Smart as a whip and no less wicked. And my husband, he was called Felix. He was an expert healer. Could fix a broken bone in a short minute. Sounds like we need him on our team. I am going to take a seat in the sand and listen to this lady's story because I feel sorry for her. She talks for some time about birthdays, about Felix's prickly beard, about the skunk Stefan once dragged home for a pet. Joy radiates from her as she remembers. She places a warm hand on your shoulder. What a gift to think of them. Oh, thank you. I'd like to give something to you, <laughs> A family recipe. One of Felix's best. He'd be happy to know it went to such a, a warm soul. I'm sorry to say, Margot, I am undead, and that restoration still spell you just gave me is basically a hey, you want to poison yourself spell? Take care of yourself. But I'll use it on a companion. You're a sweet one. Thank you very much, Margot. Oh, oh, who are you? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> Naren. Red, they said. Red, then dead. <sighs> Is this going to be another attempt at my life? Because you're a frightful bore, frankly. Not an attempt, mate. Not if I can bloody help it. You're one Time's guy. Up, your let's dance. Now, let's get into a bit of combat strategy, shall we, guys? So, there is the classic strategy that you can employ of, uh, while you're in a dialogue box with one character, you can freely move your other three characters around. Which means you can perfectly position yourself to basically get ready to destroy them. So, let's fight, friend. Now, he does get the first turn, which is actually a little bit annoying. And I like the fact that he is targeting the Red Prince. I know that sounds bad, but the fact is he is here to kill the Red Prince, not the others. Now, if we do this, we should... Get a nice... Oh, we didn't get the knockdown. That's actually a bit of a shame. And since we are blind because of his dust, we can't dash very far. But we did dash enough to hit him, but we missed. That's a bit of a shame. Okay, well, we will summon our infusion while my keyboard goes off the hook. This actually adds so much awesomeness to it because the keyboard flashes when you're using your spells. Oh, my God. If you guys haven't seen it, I'm sure you can look it up. It looks sick. Give it a look. Oh, this Naren guy is actually quite strong. So, we gotta try and beat him up, but he's got a lot of armor by the looks of it. Now, we have too many friends nearby. So, I don't think we can really... Oh, wait. That will hit just him. Lovely. And then what we can do is light him on fire by... Uh, we'll chuck them. If we hit our companions, yeah, I had a feeling we would. Um, but he is almost out of physical armor. So if we use this, this is a, um, elf specific ability, I believe. Gain one action point immediately and 10% damage boost for two turns at the cost of one constitution, which is basically your health. And then you have one less action point next turn. So if we use this, we'll do more damage. But then we can also use Adrenaline, which will give us another two action points. So we can basically beat the absolute goodness out of this guy. 
I don't know why Sabeel freaking um, teleported in front of him, but now we can go behind him, get some backstabs, which basically deal more damage. And then we'll end our turn. He will get another turn, which is a bit scary because, yeah, I had a feeling he would kill the Red Prince right there. That's all right, though. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Summon a Blood Totem to do some more damage to him and give our Totem the Farsight Infusion. And then I don't think there's anything else we can do, so we are going to shift ourselves this way a little bit. The Blood Totem is going to make him bleed. We are going to encourage our whole squad to get ready because Naren is about to go down. Oh my god, calm the heck down, low sight, you're going mad. Okay, now we will throw some dagger at him. And that will be the end of Sabeel's turn because she used an extra action point last turn. And then we will throw our projectile at him to finish him off. Lovely. That was actually a harder battle than expected. We did lose the Red Prince, but luckily this is not... Um, What's the name of it? Um, why can't I remember? This is not XCOM 2. So we can uh, bring our friends back. Now we have Resurrection Scrolls, which is the main way to bring someone back. I thought I saw somewhere that there's another way to bring them back in Definitive Edition, but for now we are going to just use a Resurrection Scroll on the Red Prince. And then we'll find out if there's another way to bring him back between episodes, hopefully. For now, happy to use the one resurrection scroll. So over here you can see, that is right, it's Beast hammering away at the ship. He's not currently going to be our companion, so we won't go and speak to him. Ha! Call it like a dog. A very tall, very strange sailing dog. I'd pity you, but Jack Kelly and Ethelbill has a soft spot for beauty, and you carry that choker off so very well. Scepter the Ineffable. Basically a talking crab. Um, tell the crab to watch its turn, or it'll find itself on the wrong end of a spear. I'd like to see you try, meatbag. Shores caught her through me like a tidal wave, ready to break over your pathetic cowed head at my command. I would love to see this thing just like... Whip out the maddest source spells in the world. That'd be awesome. Do you know any way out of Fort Joy? Of course. They'll happily dump your mega bony corpse into the sea when they're through with you. Oh, the tragedy of it. Do you know exactly what goes on inside the fort? Sorcerers dance while magistrates pull the strings. Fools all. Their tomfoolery won't save them from the destruction the void shall wreak upon them. How did you come about your source powers, Scepter? This power is my birthright, same as yours, but one of us has grown to astounding heights and the other has sunk into depths too humiliating to describe. Pity. Didn't the Order bring you here to kill you? Ha! Of course, precious. But which is worse, the cure or the disease? Definitely the cure. Definitely the cure. Considering it's not really a disease. Except for the Void Woken. They are very dangerous, scary boys. Now, there is those Crocodilians that we still have to deal with at some point, but that is not our current goal. We are going to go and speak to Griff. That's right. You know, we all know who Griff is from the previous episode, I believe. Griff, my friend. Sibyl gently places a hand on the small of your back. Her mouth reaches your ear with a whisper. Let me have a word with the gentleman, would you? I have a little clue to follow up on. Uh, I'll extend my arm and welcome you, Jester, and you're free to speak. Seville steps forward and asks Griff the cook about the lone wolves. A dead little birdie told her he's the man to talk to. A little back and forth ensues. Money crosses hands, and before you know it, Seville stands back beside you, all smiles. Thank you. We should make good on our escape, you know. I have to see a man about a wolf in the hollow marshes. Ask. A big bad wolf? Not but a whelp in skillful hands, I'm sure. Zalaskar's his name. A name for the taking, if it comes to that. So it seems that Sabeel's next quest is also outside of the fort. 
So that is very good to know that we don't have to pursue anything specific Griff glances from inside the fort. To you and back again. I'd like to discuss uh, the deal. You already know the terms. Nothing else to say. I'll hand over your oranges then, because I have them with me right here. Griff tears into one of the oranges with both hands. Juice squirts through his hands as he desperately rips through the rind. Yes, I know they're full of druid in there. You don't have to try and disguise it from me. Accounted for. Now the important question. Who's the thief? Tell the truth. The lizard Singtail was the culprit, but he's dead now. He raises an eyebrow. Looks like someone did my job for me. Yep, that's You're me. Nice free to go. It should be fine. <laughs> Eventually. Lovely. So, we can now... Oh, Griff is actually going to go himself to release a mirror. And quickly. I thank you. Very, very much. We got a bunch of XP just then, and all of our characters leveled up, as you can see on their character portraits to the left. Let's speak to Amiro and then level us all up. I hold my end of the bargain. I show you the way out. But I have something more to ask of you. Um, I think you're badly injured and need assistance right away. You should get out of here. Yes, yes, I become fine. And so much more when... When you agree to finish what I start. I'm sure I can help you out, Amira. Sahela, she is... She is everything. A ruler, a seer, a knower, a child. She cannot... <coughs> cannot be lost here. What did you have in mind? Because I am happy to uh, save Sahila too, because she seems like a very nice elf lady, even though Losa did try to kill her. For all our people, for the world, give me your map. <coughs> I show you the way out. A secret, dangerous, but it leads to freedom. I think the voice in this game is actually helped out heaps too by the fact that they didn't have to worry about lip sync. So they could just be like, hey, let's make this voice epic and not worry about syncing up the lips of all our characters. I give you this amulet. It actually helps. You must pass it to the elves who still remain. Tell them Sahela is here. They will send help. Please. She is important. Oh, so we have to escape without Sahela, but then give the amulet to I some know. elves outside. I wish you good luck and I thank you for us all. And then they'll help her escape. That's kind of exciting. Okay, let's do some leveling up, shall we, everybody? That's right. First off, Fane, Intelligence. And let's go for a bit more memory, shall we? Good to have, good to have. Of course, we have to up our summoning skills. That's all that matters to us. And we get a new talent. Now, there is always a good talent which we want for casters. Casters? Sorry. Far Out Man increases the range of your skills by two meters. And that is exactly what we want. So, confirm those That's changes. Now, it's uh, I mean, Losa's turn. So, we'll go to attributes. Now, she is a wizard, so it's all about intelligence. 100%. She has Geomancer and Pyrokinetic. Let's focus on the Pyrokinetic abilities for now. Fire is always exciting, if not the most dangerous thing in the freaking world. And can... Does she have fire? Oh, she already has fire up, man. That's helpful. What can we give her? That demon. Um, extra... Oh, no. Okay, what do we want to give her? Leech, no. Living armor adds 35% of all healing you receive by skills or consumables to your magic armor. That seems really good. Um, let's go for that. I don't think I've ever used that skill before. Okay, it's the Red Prince's turn. Strength, of course, is very important. Um, we'll start leveling up Constitution once we've got Strength a bit higher. 
And for this turn round, we'll go for Warfare, because a lot of abilities actually rely on Warfare, which will be helpful for him. And I want to give him Executioner. If you uh, kill an enemy, then you get an extra two action points, which I've found in previous playthroughs has come in very, very handy. And finally, we have Sabeel, who is our rogue. So Finesse is the way to go. And we want to give her the Scoundrel ability currently. And we will also focus on dual wielding later on. Now, what do we want to give her? Um... When resurrected, opportunist. Opportunist is very good. Um, let me just make sure there's nothing else I want more though. Uh, no, we will go for, what was it called? I can't even remember already. I'm a fool. I am an absolute fool. Um, was it opportunist? Yes, opportunist. Yeah, that's good for Sabeel because she'll hopefully be up close and personal as much as she can. Lovely, jovely. Now, we th that should mean that we are all, I believe, sitting at level three. That's right. Which means we can take on a lot of the enemies that currently reside around the place. But first, we have another quest that we must complete before we start taking on the baddies that's right we have a thing dead definitely crazy terrifying scene over here and a little dirt pile that we can dig up you can see there's a hatch there which we may use in the future but for now let's go and speak to this man over here Migo. Now you may remember that the name. The heaves through lips gummed with human gore. It turns to you with great effort, pain apparent in every movement, and madness screams from its wide, bloodshot eyes. You, 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 you. Quite lost. Quite lost. Quite lost. Careful, or they'll cross your wires. <laughs> now, a little query. Where grows the yarrow? Mm. Mm. Quickly now, for I haven't much time. Take the yarrow plant from your pouch and offer it to him. We got that last episode. The creature gingerly takes the plant into his bloodied hands. He runs his fingertips over the white flowers. His panting breath slows. Darling, dear. Dear, darling child. Hello, yarrow girl. Can it really be you? Ask him why I was looking for that flower. The creature clenches the plant tightly. His breath quickens. He seems liable to lunge at you at the drop of a pin. You wouldn't understand. A father's pride. A father's love. The creature begins to weep. Fast, silent tears spill from his eyes as he clutches the little cluster of flowers to his heart. For you, my ring, part of me, Name of Migo. Thank you. So we did just get a item from him, uh, which is his ring, which I will have a look at once I loot all of these dead body parts. And you will see that Migo's ring, two armor, and grants the restoration ability. Now, we could use that ring and could be done, but you may remember the Magister atop the castle walls wanted us to report to her if we heard anything Do all of um, like oranges, or is it just that crazy fellow with the pointy tail? Of someone named Migo. And that rat actually gives us a hint of who stole the oranges, see if you can't work it out. Have a chat to the rat and he'll tell ya. That's very helpful. That's why pet power is really helpful. Because animals a lot of the time will know stuff that no one else does. And they'll tell you and you'll be like, holy moly, that's so helpful. Why is the game lagging a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. Hopefully it doesn't throw the recording out because sometimes that happens with Nvidia Shadow Play. But let's go speak to Magister Yarrow. Hello Magister Yarrow. Recall the madman you met on the beach and say you may have seen him. You have seen him? Tell me, where was he? Describe where you met him, but caution her to be careful. There was something terribly wrong with him. 
You're very sure it was him. Hand her his ring as proof. She inspects the ring closely. Now we got the hero tag. Specific hero options will be available to you from now on. So different dialogue options based on the fact that we are a hero. This can't be. You said he was upon the beach, yes? I need to have a look myself. This, this simply can't be. Okay. She's going to go and find Migo and I think we should follow her just to see what happens. Now, I also forgot we should be looking for Irma. Um, I'm not 100% sure if Irma is actually alive or not off the top of my head. So that'll be something we'll get to discover together. The Majesty Yarrow is going that way, but it doesn't matter. We'll catch up with her. Is she quicker than me or am I just... I don't know. I feel like she's quicker than me. Oh, she got stuck on a rat. Don't we all? Don't we all get stuck on the rat? Okay, what's gonna happen? Hopefully nobody dies. What's happened? So it is his, her How dad. That's so interesting. Darling? Yarrow girl? It was her, wasn't it? The monster. Don't think of the ugly now. Here I am, here you are, here we are. Okay, now I'm gonna try and speak to her. Is that... is that really you? Little Yarrow girl! Grown up, flower-headed girl! <laughs> what have they done? Uh, ask her why she kept her own father prisoner here. Didn't she know what would happen she looks to him? At you with hatred etched deeply in the lines of her face. Hey, you did it. I didn't want any of this. Uh, say whoever did this should be brought to justice using my new hero tag. I'd die a thousand deaths before I'd see this go unpunished. I'm glad you found each other again, even under these circumstances. She looks at her father and manages a small smile. As am I. Do you know who's responsible for this? That's the question. There were always rumours about the hammer. Oh, the hammer. Dallas, that That's the one. What she was doing with the prisoners she hauled off to her fortress. Why they never joined the rank and file thereafter. So Dallas was the girl at the beginning out the front gates who did kill the lizard magister. I suppose. I suppose now I know. Have you ever seen this kind of magic before? It seems as though your father has suffered some kind of strange treatment. It's strange. It almost reminds me of the creatures Dallas keeps at her side. Sometimes you hear a kind of muttering beneath their masks. And they are terrifying she creatures, let me say that. Hand. He withdraws it quickly before remembering himself and reaching out to Yarrow again. I had no idea. What a fool I am. Wait. Before you go, Ooh, what are you, you giving helped me? us a great deal today. Oh, a Magister's key. Too. Take this key. I'll show you where you can use it. It opens a door leading into the fort that may help you get out of this wretched place. It isn't too late for you. Not yet. And we get a reward. Okay, what do we want? Now, I think some <laughs> wizard armor. <laughs> Is gonna be what our way to go. And we are going to equip that to ourselves. Then we can give Sabeel the leather armor. Was there, it? And the Losa the kind of terrible armor. <laughs> here I am. Here you what? What? Worms, darling. Ooh. Worms in my head. Really writhing, crawling about. <laughs> I'm not myself, Yarrow girl. I'm sorry, darling. Don't you dare apologize. This is not your fault. Now, weren't you going to show me where this key's used, or...? What's or did you? What have they done to you? You may have marked it on my map. To the fort, I feel like that might be something about it. The monster. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, that quest is very easy to do wrong. Or not do, because if you come 
in contact with uh, Migo before you've picked up a yarrow flower. It's very easy to not pick one up if you're not looking for it. In most games, you're like, hey, look, a flower. Who cares? Um, very easy to not pick one up. And if you don't, then, you know, you just... You don't get to, you have to fight him if you meet him. So, yeah, that's a little bit of extra quests you can do, which, again, that's kind of how this game works. you you got to find certain things to do certain quests, and it's all very exploration-based, and I love it. Anyway, guys, we are going to end this episode of Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition off here. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a little like on the video. Let me know what you're thinking so far. And peace out, everybody. I hope you enjoyed.